And this is the Bill Kelly Podcast, critical discussions in our critical times. I am your host, Bill Kelly. Good to have you with us today. Well, as sure as uh, day follows night, uh, the speculation once again about when the next federal election is going to take place and who the leaders of the main parties are going to be seems to have ramped up again. I think that probably the catalyst for this has been uh, the recently uh, announced federal budget, of course, that came down about a week and a half or so ago uh, from Finesse Master Christian Freeland. And uh, the political reaction to that, the, the business reaction to that, and it's likely the public reaction to that, I think has, has kind of stoked the fire once again about, you know, who are we going to be voting for? When is this election going to take place? Is this the sort of federal budget that the the, the liberals can hang their hat on as, as an election budget, as a platform? Not so sure about that. And about the leaders themselves, and, uh, well, the two main leaders, I mean, and Jagmeet Singh and the NDP are, are destined, I think, to be finished third, fourth, whatever the case might be. They're not going to form a government federally anyway, anytime soon for a long, long time. As a matter of fact, at that point, uh, the fact that a, a, a few now federal NDP members, MPs that is, uh, have announced that they're not going to be running for re-election in the next election kind of indicates that, that they feel as if there are, are no sunny ways, if I can use that phrase, uh, for the NDP anytime soon. And uh, Mr. Singh's leadership is probably something that's going to be talked about considerably within party ranks after that next federal election, whenever that should take place. But what about the other guys? What about the Prime Minister? What about Justin Trudeau? There's been rampant speculation over the last couple of years now that he would slash should step down. I'm not so sure that's going to happen. But what seems to have, have, have moved people in that direction that maybe something is imminent was the talk about a week and a half or so ago from Ottawa that, uh, that Dominic LeBlanc, uh, a long-time uh, Liberal MP and cabinet minister, uh, is considering running quote-unquote, when the Prime Minister decides that it's time for him to step down. Uh, and there's some history here, just for those who may not be aware. Uh, Dominic LeBlanc and Justin Trudeau are, are lifelong friends. They, they grew up together in Ottawa. Uh, LeBlanc's father was a cabinet minister, Pierre Trudeau's cabinet back in the day. And uh, young Justin and young Dominic uh, hung around in Ottawa for many, many years and apparently still maintain a very close friendship. So that, which leads to the speculation, well, would Dominic wouldn't dare stab his good buddy in the back. He must know something we don't know if he's talking out loud now about a possible run for the Liberal leadership. Uh, I'm not so sure that there's anything to that, because this is not new speculation. Uh, anytime in the last three or four years now that the Liberal numbers have, have considered uh, considerably rather decreased, uh, there's always been this talk about who might succeed Mr. Trudeau uh, when and if he steps down. And, and so, um, certain cabinet ministers' names have come and gone, and uh, the speculation has been quashed uh, probably by the Prime Minister's office. I know there was a cabinet shuffle, you may remember a couple of years ago, where a number of people, including Anita Anand, uh, actually got promoted in cabinet. She became the defense minister, and that was a really difficult portfolio at that time. But then the rumor started that she was actually going to use this as a stepping stone to the liberal leadership, and uh, she very quickly got demoted to a lesser portfolio and uh, still there on the front bench, but uh, not seen or heard much of in the last little while, but changing the case that Mr. Trudeau's hold on power is not going to be diminished anytime soon. But that doesn't stop the speculation, does it? about exactly what could be happening and when the Prime Minister may step down. The concern here, for those of us that have been following politics, not just here in Canada, but in any country for that matter, it's very, very difficult uh, for politicians to realize that they've reached their best before date. Uh, you know, athletes fall in the same way too. It, it hurts me as, as a, a hockey fan or a football fan or a baseball fan to see uh, an athlete who once excelled and was maybe at the top of their game and one of the elite athletes in that particular sport, hanging on too long and, and really becoming just a shadow of themselves. And it happens in politics too. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, very few seem to understand that uh, the party's over and it's time for them to step aside. And, and uh, the, the road to political stardom, of course, is littered with those that have fallen by the wayside uh, because of that. And, and I don't know what's going to happen with Justin Trudeau in that regard. I mean, you know, the talk again, as we a couple of months ago uh, recognized the anniversary of the day that his father took that now famous walk in the blizzard in Ottawa, that walk in the cell where he made his decision that he was going to step down. And they'd say, well, you know, is the son going to follow in his shoes? Well, he didn't. And I'm not so sure that's going to happen anytime soon. Is it ego? Possibly. Is it that he figures he really thinks he can take on and defeat Pierre Polyev in a general election? Possibly. But if that is the thinking, and if that's the foundation for Mr. Kruger deciding that he wants to stay on as prime minister for, and give it another shot, 
uh, you got to look at the polling numbers that have gone out. And they have been updated, of course, over the last couple of days in light of the budget. And uh, the increase uh, that the Conservatives have shown now in their lead, and it's substantial to me, it was substantial to begin with, but the fact that it has increased significantly over the last couple of months uh, seems to indicate that any push that the Liberals thought they were going to get from this budget uh, just did not happen. Uh, there's still a lot going wrong here in this country. And I know that there are thousands, legions of people that want to lay everything at the feet of, of, of the Prime Minister, Paulia being the one who's leader of that pact. He simply says that everything that's wrong in your life, everything that's wrong in this world, is Justin Trudeau's fault. And I suppose the naive and, and, and the, the simple-minded simple, simple minded will simply say, yeah, you're right, we hate him and it's all his fault. It's not. Uh, there's blame to be apportioned here, of course, with, with any government and with the Trudeau government in this regard. Certainly there is. Uh, but an awful lot of the things that have gone wrong and have gone wrong here are not going to be fixed if there's a change of government anytime soon uh, because they're, they're international influences and we've talked about all that. But the point is, is that when you're angry at somebody or when your life's not going well, uh, when your mortgage has increased significantly, uh, when it's costing you an arm and a leg, you're going to buy lettuce and celery at the grocery store, you're mad. You're pissed off. And you want to blame somebody. You want to vet your anger at somebody. And elected officials are usually going to be the target of that. And and Trudeau, of course, has been the target of that. Uh, you know, he's been blamed for high grocery prices. And, uh, and they they brought the leaders of those stores down there to Ottawa. And they've, they've had the meetings in front of the parliamentary committees. Uh, yet there are still people that blame him for everything that's going wrong here. And Pierre Polyev, of course, uh, the, the man of the, you know, the, the simplistic mottos, you know, the axe to tax and all this sort of stuff. Uh, he's he's wife of those sorts of things, those witty little things, uh, very, very short on policy and any ideas. Uh, but he's the alternative right now. And when I see those numbers, I and mean, when I've talked to some of my colleagues uh, about the latest polling numbers that are out there, you got to wonder, is the, is the huge increase and the big lead that the conservatives seem to have these days, is it, is it pro-Polyev? Is, is Polyev the reason people are starting to look at the conservatives as the alternative? Or is it just an anti-Trudeau vote? Or is it just people that are saying, look, I, I, I voted conservative. I don't like polio, but, you know, that's my party. Because I've heard people on both sides, including some friends of mine who have been lifetime conservative supporters, that just don't like the leader of their party. And, and some, of course, have, have harbored some resentment ever since the progressive conservative party died a rather quick death when Stephen Harper took over. You know, those parties amalgamated, uh, for those that want a short history lesson here. Uh, the Reform Party and the Conservative Party, Progressive Conservative Party, as they were called then, amalgamated some years ago. And I uh, chose Stephen Harper as their first leader. They dropped the name Progressive, and uh, many people would suggest they also dropped the idea of being progressive when that happened as well. And and there's a huge, huge segment of this population that have been lifetime conservative supporters, just as there is a long, long list of lifetime liberal supporters that are going into this election whenever it's going to be, and they're very disenchanted. Uh, they haven't changed. They feel that the party that they have supported for sometimes generations has changed. The liberals have moved way too far to the left for many liberal supporters. The conservatives way too far to the right. And, and traditionally, since 1867, uh, the majority of Canadians are, are in that political middle. And right now they're looking around and saying, who, who speaks for us? Not them, not them. And they don't know where they're going to go. So I, I think it would be premature at this stage to suggest that it's a foregone conclusion who's going to win. And that's not to suggest that, you know, there's going to be any huge surprises. We don't know what's going to happen. Uh, because it's one thing when somebody calls you, you know, and the supper hour or you get an online survey that says, hey, who are you going to vote for? There's no election. You, you lose nothing here. There's nothing to gain by saying, I'm going to vote for this party or for that candidate. But when you get into the voting booth, and it's, you know, this is, it, it's, that's when, you know, the rubber hits the road. People have got to make a choice. And I don't know which way it's going to go. Are the conservatives more popular right now? I think so. Absolutely. The numbers seem to indicate that. Is the margin as wide as some of these numbers indicate? I'm skeptical about that. But that simply means that these parties are going to have to do something right now to convince people, the disenchanted people in that middle that we just talked about, that they do hear them, that they do listen to them, and that they do want to do what needs to be done and to address their concerns going forward. And as of now, as of this day, there's an awful lot of people in Canada right now that say none of the above. And that's not good.
And that's it for this edition of the Bill Teddy Podcast. Glad you're with us today. You can catch us, of course, anywhere where you pick up your podcasts. Spread the word. And until next time, take care. We'll talk to you again soon.